have you lived with me now? 18, 19 years? About that long? Why do you ask, Johnny? Even though we don't root for them, there must be Canucks fans in this town who still hate the Islanders after losing to them in the Stanley Cup Final in 82, right? It's totally normal if I want to go on hating the Pittsburgh Penguins until my dying day. Oh yeah, for sure. Totally fine by me. I share that hatred with you for this team deep within my soul. Everybody's hands go up, way up as the Nashville Predators defeat the Pittsburgh Penguins by a score of 4-1 to one. Tuesday night inside Bridgestone Arena. The Nashville Predators have won 4 of 5 and 7 of their last 10 games. Amazing to see the turnaround this team has gone through since at one point in February they had only won 3 of a 10 game stretch. Well, they continue in the right direction as in this game they showed off this roster's depth four different goal scorers. It is always a treat when the Pittsburgh Penguins come back to Bridgestone. As I mentioned on Twitter earlier today, but for those who didn't see it, the Prince and the Penguins actually have an underrated history between each other, despite the fact that these two teams play in separate conferences. There's a 9-4 Preds win in Pittsburgh, the first season that the Preds make the playoffs. There's Kyle Turris's shootout goal in his home debut after that trade after the cup run season and in the cup run season there's the famous chicken soup game where a whole bunch of admirals and UC Soros and Ned helped beat the Penguins 5-1 in that matchup. And believe you me, I didn't have to look that up. This memory for Preds hockey is a steel trap. Believe it or not, thanks to the shutdown of two seasons ago and the shortened 56 game of last season, this is actually coach John Hines's first game coached against the Penguins. As much as NHL rosters continue to turn over season after season, these two teams are quite well still intact from the two teams that played each other in June of 2017. Preds getting some good sustained pressure as we reach the halfway mark of the first. Forsberg, because he's beaten in one area, is forced to take an interference penalty, but the Preds penalty kill would go to work and successfully kill it off so the Penguins could not get any momentum early. After eventually killing off that first power play for the Penguins, Forsberg, fresh out of the box, would get a great chance to give the Preds the lead and tie David Leguan. Oh, but he can't bury it and this game remains scoreless. Oh, how I would have loved, I'll get this out of the way now, for Forsberg to have tied Leguan's record against the Penguins, but I'll totally take the win over Forsberg getting that goal any day of the week, and so will he. The Penguins are getting the majority of the chances as we reach the last quarter of the first period, but it's nothing sustainable, consecutively, or consistent. So it's not costing the Preds as we reach the last few minutes of the first period. Preds earn their first power play of the game of about four minutes left, but this is a solid Penguins penalty kill. It's second overall on the road, third overall in the league and yeah the Preds have had some success as of late in previous games but their number is matched in this one and they can't crack the Smith with that man advantage. We reached the last minute of the first period. The Penguins who at one point were almost out shooting the Preds almost by a two to one margin have closed that gap quite a bit and just when you think this game might be scoreless going into the first intermission Ryan Johansson a key Face-off win with eight and a half seconds left to go in the first to dismiss left. And he gets it back to Roman Yossi. And the captain gets the puck behind his back to Matt Duchesne. And why stop there? The Preds are moving the puck really quick. They want to get a goal before the clock runs out. So Duchesne gets it to his buddy, Philip Forsberg, who can see an opening. Yeah, but it's not quite enough for him to shoot. But hey, guess who's over there wide open and he passes it to Matthias Echo, and he has nothing but daylight. The Smith cannot get over in time and Matthias Echo buries it into the net with a second and a half left. The Preds have a one nothing lead. The Penguins considered challenging it for goalie interference, but they didn't. The Preds have their one nothing lead after the first period. Colton Sissons would go off for tripping only 20 seconds into the second period, giving the Penguins a fresh seat of ice and a great chance to get right back in this game. But then 23 seconds later, Evgeny 
Malkin takes an interference call, so that's the end of that advantage. As time would eventually expire on the 4 and 4, Duchesne intercepts the failed clear of the Penguins, and he has a great chance and sets up Matthias Ekholm trying to get his second of the game in as many minutes of play, but the Smith closes the 5 hole and the Preds only have a 1-0 lead. Preds keep their hunger going as five minutes into the second period, you've got Mikhail Grinlin with a great snapshot that the Smith puts aside. Penguins would get another power play soon after that, and Chris Letang would get a great chance, about 30 seconds left in that mad advantage, but he rings one off of Soros' crossbar, and during the next whistle, Soros is like, thank you, my friend. Pens have to sustain some solid, tenacious pressure by the Preds in their own zone for a good two, maybe three minutes, and you thought for sure the Preds were going to bury one, but the Penguins show that they're still pretty good team as a whole, and they're able to kill it off and go the other way before Crosby is robbed by Soros. You know, it's always a good day when you keep Sidney Crosby off the scoreboard. Just over six minutes left to go in the second period though, face off by the Pens that they win just to UC Soros' right, comes back to Chris Letang and Jake Gunsel is able to break free to his left and the puck comes straight to him and he one times it home past Soros. The Pens have tied the game at one. But the Preds do not let that tying goal get them down. About two minutes later or so, Preds in the Penguin zone cycling well. Colton Sissons gets the puck to his captain and number 59 takes one of his patented one-time slap shots on net through a screen and the hurdle lines Favorite Ox, yours too, I'm sure, gets a tip on it. Tanner Janot gets it past the Smith, gives the Preds back the lead, now up 2-1. Oh, but why should we stop there? Because almost a minute and a half after Tanner Janot has given the Preds back the lead, the Penguins are in the Preds zone, hungry to tie it right back up again. The Preds try to clear. There's a miscue between Chris Letang and Matheson of the Penguins, and guess who is right? there to jump on a puck and tenacious and go the other way. It's L.A. Tobin. He's got pressure on him, but he's just got enough distance and he snaps it before the Smith can get it. Roof job! Prince up 3-1! A little bit after that, Colton Sissons endears himself to the fan base, probably just a little bit less than when he got the hat trick in game six against the Ducks as behind Soros' net, he lines up number 87 cleanly, just right, and hammers him into the glass. Preds would have to kill off another penalty a little bit after that hit, but you would never have known it because bad Penguins defense again allows Tanner to know a breakaway all alone on the Smith, and he makes a miracle save that certainly would have given the Preds the win right then and there if that had gone in. Preds come close to almost going down five on three, which you don't want to do against the Penguins, under a minute left to go in the second period as you had Matthias Ekholm slash Jake Gunsel. But unfortunately, Jake Gunsel wasn't thinking straight because he retaliated and slashed Matthias Ekholm right back and the refs caught both, so he sent both off. Soros would stop Sidney Crosby with about two dozen seconds left to go in the second period. Clock runs down. Preds still lead this one by two, three, one after two. Preds successfully kill off the remainder of that Penn's power play as we start the third period as the Preds are just under 20 minutes left to go to finish off one of their best five game stretches of the season. Off of an odd man rush about four minutes into the period, Penguins with a solid rush into the Preds zone, but solid defense and great positioning by Soros keeps this game a two goal lead. Preds doing all the right things as we reach the halfway point of the third period. Solid defensive pressure, not giving the Penguins any rebound chances and letting Soros see almost all the shots that come to him, getting to center ice and dumping in whenever they feel the littlest bit of pressure from the Penguins. It's about eight minutes left in regulation. Probably the Penguins' best chance in the third period was Rodriguez taking a shot from the point and Soros being able to cover up and get a whistle before Gensel is there to tap it home with one of his patent rebound opportunities. We reached the last quarter of the third period. Preds still quite content to just drift to center, 
dump it in and milk this clock to all zeros. About four minutes left to go in regulation. The pen's getting a little too desperate to try and get one of the two goals they need and they take a penalty. That's quite all right with the Preds. Easier time having a man advantage to just milk the clock. Just milk the clock. The Pens pull the Smith with about two minutes left and Coach Hines rewards the herd line. They got the winning goal. You go out there and get the insurance goal. And that's exactly what they do. This time, it's the Yak. Yak off Trenton with his 14th of the season into the Penguins' empty cage, giving the Preds a 4-1 lead. With the remaining time on the clock, the Pens do not go away easily. And the Preds are up to the challenge as the Pens still try as they might to see if they can climb back into this game. They do not. Preds hang on for the big win at home against a team that stole the Stanley Cup away from them four and a half years ago by beating them 4-1. It'll be five years this June, but yeah, I still pretty much hate the Penguins. It doesn't matter that we only face each other twice a season. I'd still hate them even if we had won the Cup in seven games that June. Coming into this five-game stretch starting last Tuesday, I told you this was going to tell you a lot by the Preds. And this team performed up to task, winning four of them and barely losing the fifth one. The good ship Predators appears to be going in the right direction. The Preds have a gimme. And I don't say that afraid of jinxing it. It should be a gimme win against the Flyers who are going to be a lottery team this off season and have no intention of making the playoffs. There's going to be players traded off of this team, so there's no excuse to lose to them on Thursday in Philadelphia before Toronto comes to Bridgestone on Saturday night with an Austin Matthews who's going to be pissed off after serving a two-game suspension. Then it'll be your last tough road test of the season as next week you head out on that three-game West Coast, California, and Vegas road trip. And hey, after a big win from the Penguins, what do you get as a reward on the out-of-town scoreboard? Anaheim, Dallas, and Vegas all lost. You are getting closer and closer to punching your ticket for the NHL's second season. Keep it rolling, boys. So that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. As always, click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like it. You can find my social media by clicking on the channel name. Tell all your friends about Predemption. Almost five years later, but this still bears repeating again and again. It is always fun beating the Pittsburgh Penguins.